let's hop back into AI for a moment. So sure. you hang out with the a lot of the smart, cool kids and very technical people who mm-hmm. really understand this stuff. When they talk about robots gone bad or just the plausible scenarios that would be very bad, what are they? Like, What are the two or three things that they would see as a an event or a development that would sort of be the equivalent of the trigger action plan, right? Where it's like, yeah. oh, this is life before and life after. What are the, say, two or three or one to three scenarios that they've honed in on? From my perspective, two extremely worrying scenarios. One is that AI systems get just much more powerful than human systems. And they have goals that are misaligned with human goals. And they realize that human beings are standing away of them achieving their goals. And so they take control. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that means they just like wipe everyone out. Perhaps they don't even need to. So an analogy is often given between like the rise of Homo sapiens from the perspective of the chimpanzees, where Homo sapiens were just smarter. They were able to work together. They just had these advantages. And that just means the chimpanzees just have very little say in how things go (laughs) over the long term. Basically no say. Mm. It's not that we made them extinct, although in a sense they're kind of lucky. We made many, you know, in fact, I think we made most of large animals extinct due to the rise of Homo sapiens. But that could happen with AI as well. We could be to the AI systems what chimpanzees are to humans. Or perhaps it's actually more extreme because once you've got AI systems that are smarter than you and they're building AI systems that are smarter again. Maybe it's more like we're like ants looking at humans <laughs> when we're looking at advanced AI systems. So give me the second one and then I'm going to come back to the first one with just a sci-fi thought experiment. For sure. And then the second one is like, okay, even assume that we do manage to align AI systems with human goals so we can really get them to do whatever they want. Nonetheless, this could be a very scary thing, where if you do think that AI systems could lead to much faster rates of technological progress, for in particular by you know automating technological discovery, including the creation of better AI systems. So like we've got AI writing the code that builds the next generation of AI, that then writes even better code to build the next generation of AI. Things could happen like very quickly. Well, even if you manage to have AI systems do exactly what you want them to do, well, that could concentrate power in, you know, a very small number of hands. Could be a single country, could be a company, could be like an individual within a single country who wants to instill a dictatorship. And then once you've got that power, with it, and it's kind of similar to what happened during the Industrial Revolution and earlier. So Europe got more and more powerful technology over that period. And what did it do? It used it to, you know, colonize and subjugate a very large fraction of the world. In the same way, it could happen, but even faster, that a small group gets such power and use it to essentially take over the world. And then once it's in power, well, once you've got AI systems, I think you're able to have indefinite social control in a way that's like very worrying. And this is value lock-in again where at the limit, imagine you're kind of the dictator of a totalitarian state, like 1984 or The Handmaid's Tale or something, and that, that's a global totalitarian state, and you really want your ideology to persist forever, well, you can pass that ideology on to this AI successor. It just says, like, yep, you rule the world now, and the AI has no need to die. It's like software. It can replicate itself indefinitely. So mm. unlike dictators, who will die off eventually, causing a certain amount of change to occur. Well, this is not true for the AI. It could replicate itself indefinitely. And it could be like in every area of society. And so then when you've got that, it's like, why would we expect moral change after that point? And it's like kind of hard to see. So in general, I think there can be these states where you get into a particular state of the world and you just kind of can't get out of it again. And this kind of Orwellian perpetual like totalitarianism is actually one of the things I really worry about. 